So I want to do a short video about the slicer, which converts your 3D design into the language that the 3D printer itself can understand, and also how the 3D prints themselves are created. So the slicer takes in a design, just like something you might make from Tinkercad, and here I've loaded in just a fairly plain cube. Then you slice the, the piece, which tells the computer to go ahead and convert that to the other language. So here is the very bottom layer of that piece. And if I go through all the layers, it looks like there are, looks like 167 layers on this piece. If I go to the very bottom layer, let's look around here, I can see the, the way the extruder is going to go and lay down plastic. And it's going to lay down around the outside these two lines, that's called the perimeter. And I can change that, make a thicker perimeter, three or even four lines, which will make the piece a lot stronger. Or I could make it just one line around the outside. There might be some reasons to do that. Two is a pretty good compromise. Then it's going to fill in, and to make that bottom surface, it's going to make a zigzag pattern of lines, one on top of each other. Then when it finishes this whole layer, it's going to move up just a tiny bit and do the second layer. Now notice what it does here is it makes another layer of solid lines there, but in the opposite direction, so they crisscross. It's going to make it a lot stronger when it's finished. So that is another whole layer there, and another crisscross layer, and then it stops making these layers. Let's see, yeah, it's got three solid layers on the bottom, and then it starts with this much wider pattern. This is called infill. Let me move up a few layers. The infill just fills in the inside space of the plastic so that everything else has got something to print on top of and it holds everything together. But you don't need nearly as much plastic and this saves a lot of plastic and it saves a lot of time printing. You can do things like make this more or less dense. Let's see if I take it from 20% on the inside to say 70% and I'll have to re-slice it here. Let's see what happens. You can see how much more dense this is. Uh, let's take it down to 10%. So if I wanted something to print really fast and didn't have to be strong, I can take this to only 10% infill, and now I've got a much uh, more open structure on the inside. Now if I keep going up in layers, let's see. You can see around the outside it's still printing two lines around each outside layer. It's printing this infill. It has some text on the side of it, and that's what we see over here. You can see it printing that text as we go up. And when we get to the top, layer 160, still infill, layer 161. Now it's back to that zigzag pattern, so it's trying to make a top surface. And it doesn't just do one layer of zigzags for the surface, because that's not going to look very even. It's going to kind of sink into the area between, beneath those in, uh, between those infills. But it does one that way, then changes and does it the other direction. And now that top surface is finished. It's going to finish out a little bit of text that's on the top of the piece. And then that's it. So I have sliced this piece. All I need to do is copy that sliced file to a little SD card and move it over to my printer, and then I can start printing this out.